Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live in Las Vegas for IBM's Information On Demand User Conference. Um, I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante. This is theCUBE, our flagship program where we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. Our next guest is Jeff Schick, not Frick. <laughs> I did that earlier, who uh, works for SiliconANGLE. Jeff, welcome, welcome to theCUBE. Hello. We, uh, we've chatted a couple years ago, and, and I want to share with the folks out there that, that you know, you've been in the social software space. You're the vice president of, of social software uh, for a long time, and you've seen the movie, Enterprise Software. Now we've got the current trends here. IBM has had a lot of track record in, in social software. So my first question is, what, what's changed right now in social software? Why is it so relevant, and what do you guys have right now? What are you guys positioned for in this market? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, I think we got started back in 2007 where we brought forward the first integrated social software platform for business. And by bringing that forward, you know, it really became apparent that it was our view that you could better connect people with people and people with information. That people were moving beyond email and instant message as a primary way of sharing. And so at the time, you know, we had observations in terms of the sharing that was going on in MySpace, the fledgling, you know, Facebook. There was no Twitter at that stage of the game. And it was pretty clear that, you know, people were creating content and sharing easier than ever before. You used to have to know HTML or some sort of complex authoring tool. And, you know, when I first got started, I tried to position, this stuff is so easy to use. Even young people can use it. But I say it much differently today. And I think the inflection point is that, there's not a country on the planet, there's not an industry on the planet that doesn't have you know, key customers leveraging these technologies to better, the overall, uh, better their overall business purpose. And so in doing so, you start to create traction and visibility. Um, TD Bank is using these technologies to connect 120,000 people across their enterprise, right out into the retail store locations. And so their retail employees are allowed to describe their wow moments of the day and share them so that they can have better customer service, create better customer satisfaction, have the clients be delighted with their interaction in the branch. And I think with that groundswell of activity, you're starting to see everyone consider that as a, as a high performance company. So I want to drill down on the ease of use question because that's really kind of what we're seeing. And, I want to, I, and we're seeing kind of two camps of people and I want to get your perspective on what you're seeing. You know, folks who understand the connections model of, hey, we got to connect our users and our workforce, et cetera. And then the folks who see Twitter, they see Facebook, this is the new way. Uh, to connect with, with their customers and their, their employees. So one camp, yeah, I'm familiar with it, and then the new camp of, hey, I should be doing that. So there's kind of a little bit of a marketing built into the hype of, of the trend around social media. Um, but deploying it has to be easy. So I want you to talk about what your perspective, what you're seeing, and then the ease of use, not only from a tool standpoint, but rolling it out as an enterprise pulls this huge software opportunity in, who's going to run it? <laughs> you know, do they have to staff up for it? Is it easy or easy? Some solutions we've heard, not that easy. So, you know, when I, here's some social software. What does that mean? So talk about the ease of use and ease of use from a user standpoint, meaning the people deploying. Well, so from an ease of use perspective, I think that the software needs to be so easy it doesn't need an instruction manual to use. No one has to tell you how to uh, press a button to make a blog post, right? You shouldn't have to. Um, but what is not genetic but learned is how do I create a vibrant community? You know, create the you know executive sponsorship. Uh, who owns the community? Um, that you have a healthy set of contributors and communicators, and that there are people that are leveraging this information for their business purpose, as readers, lurkers. You know, and so uh, I think there is you know a way to approach adoption in the enterprise focused on social, a set of social business patterns that allow you to have real success and, and growth within the base. Um, but with that said, in terms of a you know, user experience point of view, that user experience has to be simple and easy to use and brought into the context of the way people work. So if I live in my email, how can I get my status updates within a sidebar? How can I see the files that are shared within my social network? Can I make it that simple to use? And you know, we, as we deployed these uh, technologies, there are a lot of people that aren't considered technologists or knowledge workers per se, but they really are knowledge workers. At Lowe's, they've deployed this capability across all of the Lowe's stores uh, around, the, around the country. And you know, I thought one of the great stories coming from them was there was a young lady in the paint department, and she had these you know, expensive Teflon trays, and she had these cheap plastic trays. And they were selling a lot of cheap plastic trays, but none of these you know, $19 you know, Teflon trays. She, she said, let me try an experiment. 
She took the paint and dumped it into the Teflon tray, let it harden overnight. The next day, she put it out on the counter, pulled the paint out, put it in, paint out in. People got to see that. By the end of the day, people that had saw that bought the Teflon paint tray, and she sold out the paint trays in just a couple days. So the first thing she did was blog about that as a best practice, so that across the nation, people in paints departments were running that little experiment, and they inevitably sold out of all of their Teflon paint trays. The very next thing she did, after that was to blog about how she can't get any more Teflon paint trays. They're all back ordered now. <laughs> and so this stuff is so simple to use that they're connecting people with people and people with information in a way that, you know, you know any type of role, uh, any job can benefit by finding an expert, have a, having a threaded interaction and so forth. Why do people come to you? Um, I've just been sort of thinking about the reasons why. Somebody want to want to implement an enterprise, you know, social strategy. So there's obviously security, the, go the governance piece of it, the, the ability to customize. You mentioned email, you know, before, you know, integration, if you will. Access to the data, right, because you can't, you know, you can't get anything, you know, if you get a little bit out of Facebook and, you know, Twitter if you get the fire hose, et cetera. Um, and making it a core competency of their collaboration approach. Um, is that why people are buying from you? Am I missing some things here? I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. What are the drivers that you're seeing within your customers? Well, so first off, I think we've done a good job with the technology we've created. We've sat as the number one social software for business at IDC through a market share study for the last four years in a row. You know, Yammer, Jive are farther down in the list. And so we're really out there working with clients, and I think we have great technology, but you know, I think also IBM drinks its own champagne. I, I prefer that expression over the English version uh, where one would eat their own dog food, but we drink our own champagne. <laughs> and so not only do we have great technology, but we have the knowledge and wherewithal to help organizations recognize how can I gain business value, right? And not just soft ROI, but hard ROI. For example, when IBM rolled out um, its community capabilities and social network capabilities on IBM.com, DeveloperWorks is one of the largest communities on the planet. We have uh, several million people participating, sharing information there. And we, when we moved from the only way to talk to us is through um, a telephone to establishing communities with discussion forums and a level of interaction, IBM saved $100 million the f first year in terms of support. Um, and that has only grown better over time because now you're capturing the tacit knowledge of that level of interaction and people are starting to move to self-service. And so there's a lot of examples of where you can demonstrate you know, hard ROI and benefits to business in a way that is across every uh, dimension of, uh, of, of, uh, you know, of the clients that so, we serve. Okay, that's an example of hard ROI using cost savings as the numerator. And I presume you got revenue examples as well, right? Yeah, of course. So, um, can you share some of those with us? Well, look, I, you know, so I'm, you know, I like to talk about some of the client experiences that we yeah, have. Great. So, for example, uh, Petrobras, one of the largest uh, uh, petroleum providers on the planet, are using the technology to support an entire uh, set of safety activities and learning endeavors and sharing. So, if I'm out on an oil rig platform and I'm replacing a gasket, Right, if those employees don't know how to do that and approach that through training and through, you know, being able to find information, you know, there could be some sort of, you know, catastrophic disaster. You know, um, Bureau Veritas um, was established in the early 19th century to certify a, a ship was able to uh, uh, um, make the passage that it was booked for, and then they then uh, talked with the insurance company about what sort of uh, premium would be set. The Bureau of Veritas now is one of the organizations on the plant that examines quality in every single product out there. They certify the flat panels that are in the market, they certify the shirt that you're wearing, the coffee that you drink, and they're using this to connect their experts so that they get the right person on the right opportunity at the right time to yield the right result. And uh, that's allowed them to expand into substantial markets. Semex is, a, is a, a, a cement company. They're using the technology to more quickly create products. So as they created the ReadyMix product, they did it you know, uh, in you know, one geography, but then as they moved around the planet, um, regional requirements for cement based upon climate and environment uh, you know, needed to be factored into the overall uh, uh, mix of that ready-mix cement. And it's the way they were able to roll out a product 
you know, 25% faster than they ever were able to do before. So there's a lot of examples of mm. the business value yeah. gained and the way one can measure that. Jeff, one of the things that we've always talked about, it's always like there's, there's the obvious aha, we have to do this, the ROIs are going to be there, there's the blue sky, in some cases the specific hard ROIs. But I got to ask you the, the question, IBM has an organization that totally understands this. You guys have been doing communities, you have the tooling, <laughs> you're IBM. A lot of other organizations don't have that. So you know, one of the things we've uh, talked about is that the social software market or social media teams are small. Kind of like the web days back in the 90s when it was like a couple guys running HTML, HTML and rolling out the website. So for the companies that don't have the uh, DNA of social, um, we've heard that some of those other platforms, like Jive and, and Yammer, they, they get sold these community platforms, but yet the world's changing so fast that they feel stuck and understaffed. So the big challenge is, what tooling do they need to do? Can you, can you elaborate on your perspective on that? For organizations that are saying, we want to commit to social software, is it just about having a social media team, or is it more a line of business? Where does that crossover happen for scale within a company? So that they say, yes, we want social software, now it's how do I do it? Social media teams are kind of small, what's your take on that? Well, you know, certainly the, the social media and communications teams have a, have a role in how that can help communicate that company's messages or um, uh, help the marketing team, you know, do the good work that they do to create a proper campaign and have an environment for sharing. But, what, you know, what we try to do is look at all of the different roles within an organization and start to assess, you know, in what ways can, can we transform the way they work, you know, in terms of whether it be uh, leveraging expertise location, you know, access to information. Uh, it really is uh, an approach that uh, uh, really looks at the role more deeply. So, you know, if I'm a retail employee in a bank, how should it help me? If I'm someone that's on the marketing team building a new campaign, how can that help me? If I'm responsible for a merger and acquisition, how will this help me to do due diligence with the right people within the organization all the way through to, in the process of the merger and acquisition, can I do this outside my company boundaries where that sort of sh sharing has the proper information uh, responsibility, stewardship of security, but uh, allows you to work very closely with the acquiring company. So I, I think that you, know, you need to decompose. It's not one size yeah. fits all. Yeah. So t take me through some use cases where you've been had success with, uh, with some of your clients. Uh, who makes the decision? Is it the CMO? Is it the business unit manager? Who's the user? Who's the influencer? Who's the deployer? Can you just walk us through? Because a lot of companies are, are trying to organize it, and their staff. Um, where, where have you had the most success uh, bringing that value to your customers? Well, so I can tell you this. Um, as, you know, as we've worked, and we have over 52,000 companies you know, running our social business platform around the world, and you know, as they're leveraging this sort of technology, uh, it comes down to you know, how do you get started? Well, it may, that may originate in the IT organization with you know, examining a better class of collaboration tools. It may happen within a line of business that says, you know, I really think that we have the opportunity to, you know, better our overall result by sharing in this way or working more closely with a, you know, with a, you know, a partner or a client. So, you know, I think that those... So many, many entry points. There are many, many entry points, but with that said, I think that it takes, you know, sort of all legs of the stool to be sort of working together in a coordinated fashion. So, for example, in the TD Bank example, they created an executive steering committee which was made of their chairman, their CIO, the heads of the lines of business, their compliance department, their legal department, human resource, and marketing. And that team said, we're going there. We're on the social business journey. We genuinely believe in the benefits and value we could derive, and so let no obstacle stand in our path. And I sat on, on that committee as you know, the, you know, one of the vendors. So it's top down and bottom up. So it's organic. You can come in on any, many no entry point, and then it gets some momentum. In some cases, and then it, the, the the business models change. Mm -hmm. So the top down looks. So what you're saying is top down is, it's more of a business model mindset from the top, with organic participation from the folks in the organization. Organic comes from the people that just want to you know, use this sort of stuff. Great, so let me ask you a question. What's some of the exciting things that you've seen uh, in the market? I mean, you've been in the social space, I said, for a long time. Collaboration space has evolved. Certainly it's morphed, it's really hot right now. People want to change their business. What's, what are some of the ex most exciting things that you've seen um, that you said, wow, I wouldn't have expected that to be such a massive home run? Well, you know, um, you know, I you know, had the opportunity to create connections starting back in 2006, and 
you know, as we brought that technology out, you know, I, seeing the way that people use it is, is very, very exciting to me. You know, I just, uh, you know, as I see that logo and their masthead and they've done the customization and I, I see their branding and their culture, you know, in that, um, uh, it's thrilling, whether it be the United Nations that has deployed, you know, you know, our social capability across the entire enterprise, leveraging strong content management and analytics to, you know, help bring to the forefront that which is important, you know, um, and so I, I really think that, you know, seeing how the clients are really using it and, um, and, and really changing the world or changing their business yeah. is, uh, you know, really tremendous gratification. You mentioned sharing, obviously people want to connect with each other, that's obviously the trend that we believe in as well, but it's also made a change to how people are deploying their communities and their forum software. It used to be, okay, we had our website, corporate website, you know, company.com, you go there, there'd be like login, you have forums, still, they're still there, but there's now an emphasis of public uh, forums that are happening. Tweets, got hashtags now out there. There's a lot of crowdsourcing conversations. So how the is... Views. Views, yeah. So all kinds of new dynamics are changing from, from an entry point standpoint, more omni-channels for sales opportunities for social. Um, how is that changing the, the those those older models of communities and forums? Certainly they're not going to go away. There'll always be that intimate uh, environment. But now you you got to bring that out to the crowd. What have you seen as a success path for folks saying, hey, I've got an investment in community software, and by AKA forums or blogs. Now I want to go out into the wild where the people are. Sure, and, and, and at IBM, we've done just that. I mean, seeing IBM as a genuinely a social business, you know, we put in front of an employee uh, social media guidelines, right? And every year, uh, every single IBM employee need, you know, certify against those business conduct guidelines and social media guidelines, so they understand that as they use social media, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, describe who you are, uh, you know, speak within the boundaries of your job, uh, be constructive in the interaction, and so forth. And we, you know, we let every single IBM employee be the voice of IBM. We're allowing them to get out on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and really talk about, you know, what they're doing. So, you know, it doesn't mean that, you know, a sales rep can go announce a product. That's my responsibility. But they can then use... They could leak a product. Right? They can, <laughs> well, they shouldn't. Um, and, By accident. And, uh, um, you know, but what they can do is, if they're a sales rep, they can say, this product was just released. I want to share with this community on the internet. Or I want to share with uh, my clients a specific event. You know, and use all channels to, to basically communicate. So you know, in years past, it was, here is the one person that's the blogger on this particular topic, internet-facing. And now all of our employees are client-facing, leveraging social media on the internet, whether it be you know, the private infrastructure we've built out on .com or, or uh, the cloud, or um, you know, that uh, they're leveraging those you know, large uh, you know, public social networks. I remember you and I in 2009, we talked about this when we first chatted on the phone about influence. Um, and most people think of influence, they think of Twitter, Justin Bieber, these big, you know, big names, kind of the long tail, people who are popular. Mm -hmm. um, what's your view on influence? I mean, obviously influence you know, is anyone who influences others <laughs> at some level of degree. With big data analytics, we're seeing some demos here with Watson and other software where you can actually go in and saying, hey, that person is an influencer, but he's not like a big power blogger, but in the u unique community he's in, he's an influencer. Yeah. Uh, what's your take on this influence and where do you think it's gonna go and how does that integrate into some of the collaboration connections pieces? Well, I can tell you that uh, you know, we, we have a, a program inside of IBM called Voices and we wanna use the, you know, our employee base to amplify our communication. Right, so you know, Facebook's model now for you know communication and advertising, and uh, and um, you know the way one approaches uh, getting a message out. Um, we're asking our employees to retweet. We're asking our employees to repost and to share widely uh, information that's important. So our marketing and communications team may get a message out there. It may touch a wide swath of people, but if we allow our employees to amplify that. Uh, you have the opportunity to really widen your message. And so, you know, we're, we're completely all in. You know, we're using analytics tools to assess where the influencers are, but, you know, genuinely, we're using our employees as well to go out and whoever they're connected to, you know, amplify, uh, you know, the communication and interaction that we'd like to get more widely distributed. 
We're here with uh, Jeff Schick, Vice President of Social Software at IBM. Um, we're out of time, but I want to give you the final word. Share with the folks out there uh, who aren't here the vibe of IOD this year around the social business uh, trend here, and then share in your own words kind of how that's going to look going forward. How do, how do you see the market evolving? What are some of the possibilities that, that are around the corner that some, some of the folks might not see? So the vibe here at IOD around social business and kind of just in your own words, what you think is possible around the corner that, that, that connect the dots, read the tea leaves. Well, look, no matter where I turn here, I see social business every place, and it's prominently featured in the expo floor. It's prominently featured in all of the sessions. There's a lot, a lot of discussion about, you know, what social can do for you or, or your organization. But I'll tell you, when I got started and uh, I, uh, I uh, had my title, the vice president of social software, when I knocked on people's doors, you know, back in the early time, people say, this stuff, social software, if I install it, are people just going to goof around all day? Or, you know, uh, or, you know, is there such a thing as anti-social software? And surely there is, but Cloak today... Cloak of silence? Can people like get some but today, sort of... Today, people get it, and they want to better connect their people with people and people with information, and they understand it will drive, you know, uh, value and... So, so you see new innovation coming around the corner fast. Yeah, real innovation coming fast. And, and new capabilities and tooling. Mm -hmm. um, Anything that you think that will be a uh, surprise to folks out there in terms of these new capabilities? Will it be uh, that kind of privacy, those conversations? What well, I'll tell you a, a, a direction that we're taking that I think is really important. You know, as we uh, look at people, people being the most important asset within an organization, and having built that social business platform in and around helping that person do their work, um, we embraced uh, the acquisition of Conexa, which is focused on a broad spectrum of human resource related capabilities. So as I th have this idea about people being the front and center uh, and most important asset within the organization, expanding that in a way where you're supporting recruiting, onboarding, uh, enablement, talent management, performance and assessments, that all comes down to the, the workings of people. And so in times past, it might have been, I'm sensitive to you know, the idea that we need document lifecycle management from cradle to grave on a document. And certainly we have all, that all in on the social business platform. But this idea of people being the center of the universe, you know, we're now extended that in a way where we truly built the integration between social network and collaboration and the full range of uh, things that you need to do to support someone from hire to retire. Yeah, we yesterday we heard about contextually aware concept, and uh, yeah, we love that message. Uh, we're big believers in that, focus on the people. Smarter work. Time savings, people's time is a scarce resource, and connecting to relevance, mm -hmm. contextually relevant things. I think there's, an, there's another Google in there somewhere in this new modern era, so uh, you guys are doing great work. Jeff, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Vice President of Social Software. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Guys, thanks for having me here today. Thanks, appreciate it. <laughs>